What is going on, people? We just had another hell of a live stream from Intrepid, this time showing off the world map changes and all sorts of different stuff. I'm going to do a full breakdown on this in a day or two, but I wanted to cover the map changes right now. I'm also doing a little bit different format right now. I'm trying something out here. I am not scripting things. I'm just going by bullet points. So you might hear me rambling a little bit more. Let me know what you think about this. Would you rather me do more scripted stuff or more or less scripted stuff like this? But before we get into the map, we hit our goal of 20% viewer subscribed. Now let's get to 25% of viewer subscribed because you can't have a goal and then not do another goal. I don't think it works like that. Anyways, don't be that 79.5% of people who aren't subscribed. Click that subscribe button. In August live stream this month, we learned that the map of Vera has drastically changed. This has been teased before by Steven in previous live streams, but I wasn't expecting this. Originally, the Ashes of Creation map that you're seeing on the screen right now was 480 square kilometers. Now, the Ashes of Creation map is 1,200 square kilometers, nearly tripling the size of it, with 750 square kilometers being ocean. Part of the reason for this is they wanted to add more water for more of that naval content, allowing for trade route and caravan supports. They've added more harbors along the coast and things like that, Stephen said, but we haven't actually seen that on the map yet. They seem to have been taking a lot of stuff out from the map. They, Stephen even said that in the live stream, there's stuff missing from here. We don't know if the starting zones have changed or anything like that. We can't see the node waypoints, but it's still huge. You can tell just by looking at it, it looks drastically different than what we've seen before. Some of those differences are there are three new islands on the map. I'm going to butcher these names, but we have the island of Sujama, the Drakathorbor island, and Pelagora. One of these islands is a snow island, and the other is a desert island based on the looks, and then for, I would assume a more forestier or grassland island by the look of Drakathbor. I, again, don't know how to pronounce that. These islands, I'm sure, will be crucial to trade routes as this is part of the whole map thing. As Intrepid started building this map for Alpha 2 and the final version of the game, they realized that things started to become a bit more squished and there wasn't really a lot of room to breathe, I guess. So they had to expand the map to make it so everything's not just piled on top of each other. And there are some more significant changes with that that we'll talk about in a little bit. But along with this map, we're also getting the first look at a lot of the zone names and the continents. We now know that the western continent is called Vandegar and the eastern continent is called Illyrium. Something we didn't know before. We also get some of these zone names in this as well. Let alone those three island names that we talked about before but we also know that the oceans we now have the Tradewind Sea which is in the center right down between the two continents. That name will probably speak for itself as I'm assuming a lot of trade will be going on between these two continents. We then have the Averic Ocean over here on the eastern side and the Fortunic Ocean over here on on the western side. The world, Stephen confirmed, is not going to be a round world. You're not going to be able to go down all the way west and come out on the east or anything like that. It's still going to be technically flat, even though lore-wise it will be round. We also have some of these zone names, which I would presume, this is not confirmed, I'm just assuming here, that the names that have been listed here are going to be Alpha 2 zones. It really kind of seems to make sense with what we've seen, what they've been working on with concept and all of that, but... We have the Dunsinkel Mountains up here on the western continent to the north. We have the Kayla Riverlands, the Sandsquall Desert, which you know I called it in another video, the Jundark Forests, and the Frostgrave Fells over here on the eastern continent. So obviously this is already big. We didn't know any of these names before. Going into some of the map changes now, it seems that the Eastern Continent has had the most significant changes, otherwise known as Illyrium, I gotta start saying that. Just by looking at it, you can see that there are more swamplands now in the center of the Eastern Continent, which before it was more towards the north. It's almost like this whole thing actually flipped in a sense. Um, the snowy area is now in the north, the magical forest in the land surrounding it is now on the east side of the continent and it was previously on the west side of the continent. You can also see that the magical forest area has grown where the grassland surrounding it has shrunken down, which is pretty interesting. It seems that the starting areas, at least what we presume are the starting areas, in the old map have been expanded on a little bit on this continent, probably because as they go through it and develop it, they realize they need more room to really do what they want to do. I mean, we know that's the case. They've already said that. Um, the biggest thing 
over on the eastern continent is there is now a new volcanic region that was not on this map at all before. This is in the very northeast, you can see it. There's still the volcanic region down on the western continent. I don't know if this is going to be a volcanic region anymore or if that's going to change, but I had a feeling, I believe I even said this in my volcanic region video breakdown, is that I bet they were going to expand on that because it's a pretty cool area and now they definitely have expanded on it. They've added a ton to it. Otherwise, again, you can tell that the continents are more spread apart now. We have that 750 square kilometers of ocean to set out and explore. And one of the biggest things to come out of this, which really could change Ashes of Creation in general, in a sense, is that all the ocean you are automatically pvp flagged in i'm gonna do more of a video on this later on but that is absolutely huge before everything played into the corruption system unless it was a pvp objective but now you set foot in the ocean on a ship you are automatically flagged as a combatant for pvp which means that you can freely attack people and people can freely attack you meaning that it is now less safe for you to travel in the ocean this actually makes a lot of sense because a lot of the ocean is going to be surrounded around trade and certain objectives but now you gotta watch your back on the ships because people aren't gonna be risking themselves flagging as corrupted because they can kill whoever they want in the ocean which honestly i think intrepid needed they needed some sort of zone that was full pvp enabled that you didn't have to worry about hitting certain statuses that you didn't want to hit this really kind of opens up the world a bit and really caters more to those hardcore pvp players but again we'll see a lot more how it plays out in alpha 2 but i think this is a great change again i'm gonna do a full video on this later this week also we now know that with the map expanding there are now actually less nodes in the previous map there was 103 nodes and now there are only 85 nodes the reasoning behind this is it makes each node feel more meaningful and you aren't kind of overburdened with all of these node areas there's still only a max of five metropolises the underrealm still exists which steven said we'll see a map of later down the road we also now get a feeling of how big this map actually is because Steven gave us a bit of travel time information. He said that it will roughly take 90 minutes in real time to walk from the top of the continent to the bottom, which you know, in a video game, that's huge. That's a lot of travel time, which is really going to make you want to stick more to your node that you are at instead of traveling across the world. It also helps expand trade routes and resources, making things more scarce, building up an actual economy. And if you are mounted and not walking, it'll take about 75 minutes to travel. It will also roughly take five minutes to travel from node to node walking as well. So the world is pretty big like this is a massive map it was big before now it is even larger and honestly it's really exciting it just means more content more stuff to be filled in but you think now that when they add more areas with dlc and expansions down the road the map is going to be absolutely huge one thing steven did say that as of right now the server cap is still going to be 8 to 10k players on this map even though the map has expanded which allows for players to be more spread out but he said their network team is doing really good things so this is still probably subject to change maybe we could see this number go up as we get further down the road and these servers seem to be able to handle it if they do but even still 10k people for a mmo server is a lot of people and that's 10 active people in the world plus whoever's in the queues and there's no phasing or anything like that like you see in wow so that is a pretty big thing and this world will really feel alive even at this size let me know what you guys think of these map changes in the comments below and if you're new to ashes and to create an account and want to do so to jump in on the forums or just ready yourself to jump into this amazing world of vera that we're now seeing be sure to use my referral link in the description below you don't have to but you can otherwise be sure to click that subscribe button hit that thumbs up turn on the bell for notifications and stay tuned for a lot more to come